Hey guys, today we're gonna learn the physics behind wakeboarding. All right, go. Ah, oh, this is very difficult. All right, so wakeboarding was invented back in 1985 when a water skier decided to use a surfboard instead, and the rest is history. And the concept's pretty simple. So I'm strapped into a wakeboard, and I'm being pulled by a jet ski, and uh, there's some pretty interesting physics. Whoa! All right, so now let's go inside and learn some physics. Now, wakeboarding, just like a lot of things, is a delicate balance of forces. If you try to stand up on a wakeboard stationary, these forces are not balanced in your favor and you will sink. That's because the force of gravity pushing you down is greater than the buoyant force pushing you up. So there's got to be some other force in play, and that is lift. In our case, lift is an upward force that occurs perpendicular to the flow of water, and it occurs because some of the water that hits the board is deflected downwards. Now because of Newton's third law, which states every action has an equal and opposite reaction, that means that the water actually pushes the board up. And once that force can overcome the force of gravity pushing you down, then you experience planing, where you become supported entirely by lift and not by buoyancy. Now in order to get lift, the angle of the board is super important. When you start out in the water, the board is vertical at a 90 degree angle to the water. And once the boat starts pulling you, the force of water hitting that board creates drag. And that drag then pulls back on the rope, creating tension. And this tension can be used to push yourself down and push the board down. And as you push down and get a lower angle, some of that water is diverted downwards, which in turn pushes the board up, creating lift. So once the weight of water being pushed down is greater than the weight of the wakeboard and the wakeboarder, then you'll be able to stand up. And we can actually try to do a rough calculation to see the minimum speed that would be needed for me to get up on the wakeboard. So first we need to find the force of gravity pushing me down. We know the acceleration of gravity to be 9.81 meters per second squared, and if we assume the wakeboard and I together have a mass of 75 kilograms, that means we need to overcome a force of 735.75 newtons. Now to find lift, we need to calculate the weight of the water pushing against the board, which means we first need to know the density of water. And for salt water, that is 1,025 kilograms per square meter. And then we multiply that by the area of the board and the velocity squared. Now, this would be right uh, for the total force of water pushing against the board. But if you remember from earlier, some of that force is drag and some of that force is lift, depending on the angle. And we can find which part is lift using some good old trig. So with this triangle, the length of these sides correspond to lift and drag. The vertical one is drag going back, and the horizontal one is lift going upwards. And at a 45 degree angle, we can see they're equal. However, if we go to an 80 degree angle, we see there's much more drag than lift, and at a 10 degree angle, we see the opposite. So for our calculations, we'll assume an ideal 10 degree angle, and doing the cosine of 10 degrees, we see that 98.4% of that force is lift. So now that we know that, we can solve for velocity. But real quick, I wanna show you that all of the units match up, which is really important for an equation like this. So area is meters squared, density is kilograms per meter cubed, and velocity squared is meter squared over second squared. And this all cancels out to kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared, which is exactly equal to the unit of a Newton, which we have on the other side. So now that we know that all of our units match up and this equation should be correct, we can solve for velocity and we get a minimum velocity of 1.3 meters per second, or roughly three miles per hour. And that is where theoretically the lift is equal to the force of gravity. Now I guess to really make sure that this equation holds up, we need to see if I can actually get up at that speed, which thinking about it sounds pretty difficult. 
So I guess let's go back out on the water and see how this math holds up. I was almost able to get up at three miles per hour, but I was able to get up at four miles per hour. And I think that is well within the margin of error for not very scientific YouTube experiments. And I think that we can chalk up that mostly to operator error by me, who is definitely not close to the best wakeboarder. And also the fact that fluid dynamics is super complicated. And this was definitely a bit of an oversimplification. But regardless, I hope that you guys learned some pretty cool physics from wakeboarding, and I hope you guys learned a lot. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. And thanks to all my lovely patrons who really make these videos possible. Thanks. Oh my God.